Hey everyone, I'm Brandon. This tutorial is for those who have already completed a frame and are ready to assemble the rest of the drivetrain motion components in the Onshape. Um, I'll link those prerequisite videos in the description. If you haven't used assembly mates in Onshape before, I recommend you watch a quick tutorial on that first, and I'll include a link in the description for that as well. Um, in this video, you'll be learning how to download parts from West Coast Products and then insert and assemble gearboxes, bearing blocks, bearings, all the motion components in uh, Onshape in your FRC drivetrain. So to get started, the first thing we'll do is go to West Coast Products website, uh, wcproducts.com, and we're going to download those components. Um, the gearbox that we're going to be using is called a WCP single speed flipped gearbox. So we'll just search that. And uh, is this one right here with the two Falcon motors? So we'll go scroll down to the CAD drawings uh, tab, and we're going to just click on that step file to download it. Um, the next thing that we're going to download is the bearing blocks. There's uh, so w when you go to the bearing block page, it's actually going to redirect you when you go down to the CAD drawings tab. It's going to redirect you to the Versa chassis page. That's fine. We'll actually download several components from this page. So we'll get the WCP side bearing block kit step file. And a step file is just a generic CAD file. Uh, WCP gearbox bearing block, we'll get that as well. We're going to grab the WCP cam step file as well as the Versa chassis hex shaft. And after that, we are going to go to uh, the bearings page. I'm going to scroll down to the CAD and Drawings tab. And we're going to look for the half inch hex ID flange bearing right here. Go ahead and download that step file. And lastly, we're going to go to uh, the number 25 sprockets page. Scroll down to the CAD and drawings, and I think it should be the top one, the half inch hex bore 16 tooth aluminum hub sprocket for 25 chain. Uh, so go ahead and download that step file as well. And uh, lastly, actually, we're going to go to the wheels and hubs tab, click on Colson wheels, and we're going to get the four inch diameter. Uh, 0.875 inch half inch hex bore Colson wheel. Uh, make sure you click on the the step that's underneath uh, CAD. So click on that. This one is actually just a PDF. It's just mislabeled. All right. So we've got all of those things downloaded. Now we're going to open up our downloads folder, and we're just going to unpack these. So uh, these zip files. You can just right click on those, extract all. Uh, and I'm just going to browse and I'm actually going to put it directly into the downloads folder. Extract. Just do the same thing for each of these three things. Put it in the downloads, extract. downloads and extract. Okay, so now we've extracted those three step files. We can just delete those extra zip folders. And now we're ready to actually put them into Onshape once we go into the assembly in a few minutes. But before we do that, there's a few quick changes I want to make to how the frame is currently set up since the last video. Um, first, I'll just go ahead and get rid of these three planes right here by clicking on this little eyeball over here to hide those since there's really no point in having them visible. And I'll also hide the origin for now. Um, so one thing I want to do is change the thickness of the belly pan. And to do that, um, that should be... Uh, you just double click on the extrusion. When you hover over it, you'll see the belly pan is uh, highlighted. So double click on that and we're going to change this 0.25, the quarter inch thick belly pin, to an eighth inch thick, 0.125. Okay. And 
the next thing that we're going to change is the wall thickness of these tubes. Right now, the wall thickness is only a sixteenth inch, but we want it to be an eighth inch thick for the drivetrain, so it's a little bit tougher. So we will go to hollow tubes, the shell, double click on that, and instead of it being one sixteenth here, we're going to change it to one eighth. Hit enter, and then you'll see these are going to be a little bit thicker now. So now that's 0.125, perfect. All right, so we've got the correct thicknesses for those parts now. I'm going to go ahead and just right click on this and uh, I'm actually going to hide the belly pan so this is not in the way while we're working. Um, the next thing I want to do is actually go into the sketch for, um, for the bearing blocks. So we're going to go into the bearing block sketch let's see double click on that there we go and I'm actually gonna make it so that these um, instead of these just being stationary squares for the bearing blocks to sit in in order to make it so that we have chain tensioners um, which is the actual the WCP cam part that we downloaded those need to be able to adjust side to side so we're gonna uh, First, we're just going to go ahead and delete everything on this side since we'll just mirror it in a second um, after we've edited it on this side. So we'll delete that and then we'll click D for dimension. That's what the dimension tool shortcut is. We're going to click on the center there and the center here. And we need to go ahead and recreate that vertical dimension of 0.125. It should automatically be that size. And then I'm going to click on equal and I'm going to click on this circle and that circle and now we have everything fully defined as it was before uh, I deleted the, uh, the mirrored version. So for the mirrored version, um, well, for, the, uh, for the actual new sliding bearing block, we're just going to change this 1.375 to 1.725 we're going to get rid of this dimension altogether and we're going to go ahead and do another dimension. We're going to click on D. We're going to do a dimension between these two holes and that's going to be 2.225 inches. Uh, let's see. Ah. We already had that dimension. I just need to uh, edit it. So change the 1.875 to 2.225. And then you'll see this one just sort of flies out to the right side. What we want to do is make it so that it's centered on this hole. So I'm going to create a new line and I'm going to use construction mode, which is just Q. Um, we're going to do a dotted line from that point to that point. And then we're going to do another one from there to there, escape, and then we're going to click on the letter E on our keyboard, which is again the shortcut for equal, and we'll click on this and this, and now it's perfectly centered on our uh, cutout. So what we need to do next is instead of having these just be holes that are floating out beside the slot, we need to slot it into the rest of the rectangle. So I will create a line right here and again right here and every time uh, I you see the line tool disappear or reappear I'm just clicking on L on my keyboard that's the easy shortcut so I'm just clicking there and then I click L then L again drop it there and click L again so now we have those slots there, and I'm going to click on M for trim so that we can get rid of these extra little segments right here. There, there, and we'll trim all those out. And now we're going to fill it the corners right here. And looks like mine did it automatically, but make sure that 
um, when you filled it. Let's do uh, let's do 0 0.125 inches for that size. Actually, I liked it better as 0 0.1. And then we're going to change this to 0.125 as well. All right, so now everything should be good to go for the bearing block uh, pocket, but we still need to add the hole for the WCP cam. So I'm going to click on C for circle, and I'm going to drop a circle out here in space. Its diameter, and I'm just going to click on D for the dimension tool. Its diameter is 0.201 inches and it's going to have a distance from here to here of 0.743 to give it the, uh, the maximum amount of adjustability for the WCP cam there. Alright, so now we have everything finished on this side, we just need to copy it over to that side, so we'll highlight this entire part of the sketch and we'll click on mirror and then we'll use the same line as before in the middle there and it should mirror everything over automatically that looks good and you'll notice that the uh, the cam is towards the gearbox so the gearbox is in the middle that means the chain loop is running right here in order to tension this to tension that chain the WCP cam is always going to push into the bearing block that it's beside so you need to push away from the gearbox to tighten the chain. So that's why it's, uh, we have that hole there for the WCP cam, and the other one is there. So they're both on the inside towards the gearbox. All right, so that looks good. Um, just click on the check mark, and you'll see this side disappeared for that, uh, that hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this, uh, the bearing block holes uh, pocket, and I'm going to go back into my bearing block sketch, and then I'm just going to go ahead and extrude it again. I'm going to click remove, and we're going to do merge with all, and through all, and that'll make it so that it goes straight through to the other tube on the opposite side, and go ahead and click check. All right, so now we have our adjustable bearing block pockets ready to go. So now that we have that done, everything in this frame is ready to be assembled. So we'll go ahead and go into the assembly, and we need to import uh, all of our parts that we've just downloaded. So um, you're going to go just click on the import button and highlight all of the, uh, the parts that you've just downloaded and click open and I'm going to do combine to a single part studio so that each one of those just is its own individual part and let's see if everything works properly on the first try alright it's looking like everything should be good alright so now we're just, you, you see everything down here has been uh, sort of just inserted into your file. All right, looks like everything. So I'm going to go up to the insert button in the top left, click on that, and I'm going to first insert um, part studio one. So that's the actual frame. I'll insert that. And I'm going to hide that uh, belly pan again so it's not in the way. Now, the first thing that we'll do is um, actually we're going to create another assembly. So create assembly. And... Actually, no, we don't have to do it like that. We'll delete that. So in assembly one, we'll go ahead and insert, um, let's see, we're gonna do a bearing, 
and a what is the gearbox bearing block there we go a gearbox bearing block and then the actual gearbox itself the WCP single speed flipped gearbox so we'll insert all of those and just go ahead and click the check mark we'll work on these first before we do any of the other stuff um, so if you try to drag those out of the way you'll notice if you if you try to work on the gearbox since it's an assembly it's going to drag one part away from the rest of it so I'll just control Z to undo that before I start working with the gearbox I'm going to highlight it like this and I'm going to click on group and then check so now the entire group of gearbox parts moves together um, so in order to mount this gearbox to the frame you need to put this bearing block uh, sort of mount it on there is sort of what sandwiches the tube in between the, the gearbox itself and the wheel so um, for the first mate what we're going to do is a cylindrical mate between uh, this one's going to be kind of tricky if you can click on the actual circle of the sprocket since this isn't a thunder hex there's no like hole in the middle click on the circle of the sprocket right there the outer circle and click on that outer circle of the bearing block itself and you can see right now it's facing backwards so I'm going to click on this to flip the axis and now it's facing the right direction just go ahead and click on the check mark and I'm going to drag it out a bit so you can see that's essentially where it's going to be inserted this circle goes into this hole right there um, we're going to do a planar mate drag it back out again we're going to do a planar mate it's important not to just do it between here and there because there's actually a little bit of a gap a weird gap thing that happens if you do that so I'm going to go between here and this face right here and then I'm just going to add an offset of one inch and it looks like that went the wrong direction so let's go negative one inches there we go and then check um, another thing that we need to do is a cylindrical mate between this hole and the hole right behind it that way the, uh, the bearing block doesn't rotate around when it shouldn't alright so that's there uh, lastly we're going to go ahead and mate this cylinder to this cylinder uh, it looks like it's facing the wrong way again so we'll just flip it around you want the flange facing out check and then we're going to use a planar mate we pull that out a bit we're going to do a planar mate between here and the back of the flange where that's going to be interfacing with the bearing and check and now I think the only thing that we might need to do um, yeah so we'll do a quick planar mate actually we'll do a parallel mate between this face of the hex shaft and if I can get in there this face of the inner hex of the bearing click solve check so now when the hex shaft rotates the actual bearing will rotate with it so here I can just do uh, I'll fix that now I can rotate this hex shaft around oh actually I guess this is still part of the entire uh, group so it won't want to rotate so I'll just undo that fix alright so now that's done um, we're gonna take this entire thing Control C, Control V. We're just going to copy and paste another one into the assembly. That way we have one for each side. So the first thing we're going to do to put those onto the actual tube, we're going to click on 
this face of the, the main plate of the gearbox and the inner face of one of our uh, drive rails and obviously you can see it's turned sideways we need to fix that it's pretty simple um, so first actually we'll get it into the exact right position with the cylindrical mate between uh, the cylinder of the bearing block or the bearing it doesn't really matter what you choose for that one and then the cylinder of the center hole in our structure solve that and then we'll do a let's see so it needs to rotate up it looks like yep so we'll do a cylindrical mate between this hole and this hole solve all right, so now everything is, oh, let me undo that actually. So first, before I rotate that, oops. So before I do the gearbox actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and group all of these things together as well. So I'll highlight all the frame parts. In fact, I want to unhide the belly pan when I do this. We'll show the belly pan. Yeah. So I'm going to group all of those together. Check. And then I'm just going to select one of them and go ahead and click fix. That way it's fixed, like locked to the origin basically. Um, now that it's locked in and none of those parts are going to move around each other. I'm going to hide the belly pan again and uh, we'll redo these uh, mates. So a cylindrical mate there to there. And a planar mate there to there. And then a cylindrical mate between this hole of the bearing block and the hole, ooh, let's see, yep, yeah, this hole. Solve, check. All right, there we go. So now everything looks right and we didn't move anything that shouldn't be moved. All right, so that's one side done. Um, <coughs> Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. So we'll do a planar mate between the front face of that plate and here. And we're going to flip the direction so that it's facing the right way. Solve. Yeah, that's right. Looks really weird since the motor is in there, but that's just because we haven't fully defined all of its mates yet. So we're going to go to cylindrical mate, do the bearing block to its hole, and then we're going to do the bearing block mounting hole to its hole on the frame. And yep, that should be everything. So we have both of our gearboxes in place now. The next thing that we're going to do is insert, um, we're going to go ahead and do the entire uh, bearing block and shaft and sprocket and wheel assembly for the front and back wheels. So we'll insert just one wheel. We'll just put it out in space. And we're going to do a single sprocket. We'll drop that out there as well. We're going to do one of our hex shafts. <coughs> and where's our other bearing block? There we go. So the side bearing block is a two-part sandwiching bearing block that goes around the tube. We're going to drop that there. And then this time we're going to need two bearings. Drop one bearing and then one more. <clears throat> and I'm actually going to go ahead and drop a second sprocket and you'll see why in a little bit. Alright. <clears throat> so 
So the first thing that we'll do is put the bearings into the bearing block. Actually, even before we do that, I think this is another two-part thing. Yep, it is. So we'll go ahead and group those together. Group. Check. And now we're going to do a cylindrical mate between the bearing and the bearing hole in the bearing block. Trying to see which way is it facing. I think that's the way we want it. Let me drag it out and double check. Yeah, okay. So we want it like that. And then we'll do a planar mate between the back flange of the bearing and the front of this flange on the bearing block. And then we'll just go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So we'll start with the cylindrical mate there. And I think we need to flip that direction, yeah. Check. And then we'll do a planar mate. So I'm going to pull it out a little bit so I can see it better. We'll do a planar mate between that flange where it's going to be intersecting and this flange on the actual bearing itself. Alright, so everything should be together now. Yep. <coughs> and then I'm also going to go ahead and do a planar mate between this, oh, let me zoom in, that hex uh, face and this one. Solve. That way they're always rotating together. So here, if I fix this, you'll be able to see I can now rotate these and they go together. I'll unfix that since I'll need to move it around in a second. <coughs> so now I'll put the hex shaft into the uh, into the bearing block, and it's important to make sure that the wheel is on the outside of the bearing block. The outside one is the one with the uh, with the sort of cone hole. It's like a little counterboard hole or counter sunk, whatever it is. Um, I'm actually going to go and do that wheel first, come to think of it. So we'll do a cylindrical mate between, well, let's just do this outer circle of there, and we'll click on just any any one of these circles is fine on the bearing. Um, solve that. And then we're going to do a planar mate. So I'm just going to raise it up a little bit so that I have room to work. I'm going to click on this outer face of the bearing. And then I'm going to click on the bottom most face of the wheel, which looks like it's going to be that face right there. And it should be the same on both sides of the wheel if you want to do it on that one. It doesn't matter. The wheel should be um, symmetrical. And now I will do another one of those parallel mates for the hex shaft to line up again. So we'll do that that solve all right so now it will rotate with the bearing block bearings as well so next um, we're gonna go ahead and do we're gonna do this shaft I'm gonna make it face out I'm gonna make it so that actually so you'll see on this shaft there's a spot where you can put a, a, a snap ring um, but it's only on one side. I'm going to make it so that the snap ring is facing the inside of the robot because I prefer to use um, just a, a quarter twenty bolt tapped into the end of the hex shaft to hold the wheel in place. So we'll leave it in this orientation. So I'll do a cylindrical mate between this cylinder and let's just go for uh, in, any one of these cylinders is perfectly fine that cylinder and then we're going to do a planar mate so I'm going to scoot it out a bit that way I can see it I'm going to do a planar mate between the outer face of the hex shaft and um, I guess we'll do this face right here since that's what it's going to be flush with alright so now that's what the, uh, the hex shaft is going to look like
and you'll see there's actually a slight oh no there's not a gap okay good so that's our hex shaft um, now we just need to do these two little sprockets and it's important that you line up the sprockets so they actually uh, line up with the ones in this assembly. So the first sprocket is the actual sprocket part. The plate part is facing away from the, the tube wall. So we will... It's loading something. So we need to basically flip those over. We're going to do a cylindrical mate between there, oh, will it work? The inside cylinder of the head shaft and then the cylinder of the, uh, the actual sprocket and solve it just to put it back into its position. Check. Um, actually, so I'm gonna undo that one. It was facing the wrong way. See so here what I can do. What is this error coming from? Planar mate. Mate connector. Uh, I don't think that's supposed to be there. I'm going to get rid of that one. Yeah. So we'll do a cylindrical mate again between the sprocket cylinder and the cylinder of that hex shaft. Um, it's facing the wrong way though. So we're just going to flip that over, check. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other one. In fact, first I'm just going to, yeah, we'll go and do that, it's fine. Right there, and there, and then we're going to flip it over. <coughs> so I'll move one of them down. It's important that the distance between um, the basically where the tube wall is, which is going to be here, and here is the same as it is on our uh, gearbox. So I'll measure that real quick over here. The distance from the tube to, we'll do this surface of the sprocket, is 0.5, I'm just going to copy this actually, 0.54997. <coughs> Now we'll do the planar mate between uh, where the wall would be, which is here, the tube wall, between there and here. And we're going to add an offset equal to that distance that we just saw. And it should scoot out. Yep, there we go. And the other one is pretty much just right up against it. To double check, we can go into this and confirm. Yeah, it looks like it's just right up against it. So we'll put those two sprockets right beside each other. We're going to do a planar mate between there and there. And then lastly, we'll do the parallel mates between the hex shaft and these flat faces of the hex on the sprockets. Uh, let's see, this one's going to be tricky to reach. Yeah, we're still in the parallel tool. Parallel between any one of these faces and that face. Let's say solve. All right, so now we have two sprockets on there. And this entire thing now is going to be copied to each corner for our four corner wheels. So I'm just going to highlight this entire thing and actually group it together. All right, so now we have a group. This whole thing will move all together. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste one over here, one over here and one over here for our different wheels. And they're sort of just floating out in space, but we'll go ahead and uh, actually mount those now. So we're gonna do a planar mate. Whoa, what just happened? 
member of same group. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's undo that. It doesn't like it when we create that as a group when we just uh, fully define the entire thing. So it's already basically a group since we've done all those mates. So we actually don't need to do the group. Undo that part if you did. And we'll just copy it as is. So copy, paste, paste, paste. So that's just control Z and then control C and then control V three times. All right. Now we will do a planar mate between this face of the bearing block and then the outside face of our drive rail. Where did it put my wheel? Thanks. Let me try that again. Planar mate. Does this? No, yeah, that's not fixed anymore. Is this fixed? No, it's not. Okay. So planar mate between here and here. Solve. There we go. Okay, now it's jumping into its position. We want to flip it the other direction. Solve. All right, so now it's facing the right way. Check. And we're going to do actually some more planar mates since this is a, uh, it's basically mounting a square to a rectangle. So we'll do the bottom part of that square to the bottom of this rectangle. Solve. And now we need to do the side of it. So we'll do, uh, let's say, this side. to slowly this side solve and it should be right where we want it and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create an offset so since this is the sliding portion right now since it's touching wall to bearing block it's like it's all the way pushed out on that WCP cam I'm going to create an offset and since the distance of travel is 0.35, I'm just going to do 0.35 over 2. That way we have a centered wheel. And it uh, looks like I need to do negative. There we go. Solve that. All right, so now that's centered inside that hole. <coughs> so we'll go ahead and do these other four real wheels real quick. on that face. We'll just do this one over here for now. That face. Solve. And it needs to be flipped the other way as well. Solve. Yeah. I always click solve just to see, make sure it looks right before I click the check mark. You don't have to, but it's recommended for this kind of thing. Uh, so we'll do the check. And I'll do the bottom face of the bearing block with the bottom face of its hole. Check. And then the side to side wall part. So I'll do one here, one there. So yeah, that one looks right. And now I'm going to do that same offset 0.35 over 2. Which way did it move us? opposite way so yeah negative 0.35 over 2 solve all right now for the other two this part's kind of tedious since all of these are going to be basically the same I'm going to do it in a different order this time but it doesn't really matter what order you do it in There's that one. We'll do this face here. And 
and then the furthest wall to the furthest side of the bearing block solve and I'm guessing it's just going to be negative this time negative 0.35 over 2 that looked right yeah and check and the last wheel So this one's already facing the right way, that's helpful. We'll do the bottom of this bearing block to the bottom of its hole. Solve. And then we'll do the side of the bearing block to the side of its hole. Solve. And Add that same offset again, negative 0.35 over 2. Solve that. There we go. Hmm. For some reason it looks like this part didn't work properly. I'm going to add that parallel mate between there and there to make sure that the, uh, the corners are aligned properly. Yeah, it looks like I'll need to do that everywhere. Alright, still another parallel mate right here to here. And lastly, fourth parallel mate right there right there all right so now we have those four wheels installed um, we can just go ahead and do our last middle wheel for the actual uh, gearbox so we'll drop a wheel here and another wheel over there <coughs> We'll do this inside flange of the wheel to the bearing itself, so that it's basically pressed up against there. There's really no purpose in having a spacer unless you expect it to rub. Um, that's solved. Check. And we need to do a cylindrical mate between the wheel and, uh, let's say, the easiest thing to reach is actually that got to be a circle, anything cylindrical. And then we'll do that parallel mate to make sure that it's lined up with its hex shaft. Alright, so that's one side. And then we'll go and do the same thing on the other side. So we'll, do, we'll start off with the cylindrical mate between the wheel and a sprocket for now. And then a planar mate. We're going to drag that wheel out so we can see it. We're going to do a planar mate between this flange and the outer face of the bearing. And then we'll finish it off with one of those parallel mates. Alright, so now we have all of our wheels in place, and the last thing that we need to do real quick is the WCP cams, which is the part that we added those holes for. So that's what this hole right here is going to be, is a WCP cam. So we'll insert those. Put one there. Oh, restore that. I accidentally hit escape. I'm just going to go ahead and do one real quick to start it out. We'll do a cylindrical mate between here and here. Oh, I didn't get it the first time. There we go. 
and then we're going to do a planar mate between there and here. Check. All right. So now you can see basically how the uh, the WCP cam works. It's going to be this this hex part right here is actually for you to put a wrench and rotate this thing until it basically pushes this bearing block as far out as possible to tighten the chain between uh, each wheel and the uh, the gearbox itself. So that's kind of what it's going to look like right there. I'll just go ahead and insert the other four. In fact, I'm just going to click on this one and I'm going to copy it. Copy, paste, paste, and paste. So we'll have all four of those. All right. So we'll start off on this side by doing a planar mate between that face and this face. And it's going to jump to the center of the bar, probably. Oh, goodness. There it is. So I'll do a cylindrical mate now. I'm going to drag it over so that I can see it. Cylindrical mate between the cam and its hole. And then we'll do the ones on the other side. Cylindrical mate there and there. This one's backwards, so we need to flip it over. There we go. And then a planar mate. So we'll pull it out so that we can see. Click on that face, that face, solve. All right, that one's good. <coughs> And in the CAD, it doesn't really matter what direction you have it facing. It's just sort of there so you can have the complete CAD. You're not using it to actually tighten a chain right now. Um, so we'll start out with the cylindrical mate. Each of those holes. Flip it. Solve. Yep. And a planar mate between there. and there. Did it work? Click it again. There we go. Just loading kind of slow. Solve that. Alright, so that's good. And that will do it. If you want, I can uh, sort of rotate those so it looks like it's about the right tightness. Sort of pushing right there maybe. Yeah, this one's like it's uh, completely loose, almost. Oops. Alright, so we have all those installed. Um, that's pretty much all of the motion components of your drivetrain right there. Um, I'll go ahead and unhide everything up at the top. Here, let's see. Show all. Is that the thing I want? No. Oh, I'm going to undo that show all instances. There we go. So now we can actually see the belly pan in there again. And then I'll just hide that. So there you go. That is your complete um, drivetrain. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and cut these shafts too. That part is uh, it's not required, but you can do it for fun if you want. Um, same thing with these shafts, that, since they're really long. Something that you will want to do, actually, is um, so obviously you're going to have two different chains, not three. This gearbox comes with three sprockets in it just in case you need all three. We're going to hide that last one right there. And on the back of the robot, we're going to hide the inside sprockets. And then on the front of the robot, we're going to hide the other sprocket, the outer sprocket. That way we have each chain loop, you know, not interfering with the other. 
So you'll have this sprocket taking a chain to that one, and you'll have this sprocket taking a chain to that one. So it's two separate chain loops. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, if you want to stick around, we can go ahead and chop off the ends of these hex shafts. So I'm actually just going to right click on it and do edit in context. And then I'm going to do, let's see, actually, so let me X out. I want to make sure something real quick. Go back to the assembly. So the distance from there to where we're going to cut it, which is right here, is that 2.578. Um, so we'll go back into there, edit in context, and then we're going to create a sketch on here on the end of that shaft. Sorry, computer's going a little bit slow right now. That's fine. And we're going to do a circle. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's just going to be a little bit bigger than that hex shaft. That should do it. And then we're going to extrude that. And we're going to click on remove. And then that depth is going to be what we just copied, the 2.578. So it should remove that amount of material from our shaft. Check. And go to assembly. And it should have those chopped off nice and short. Yep. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing for these shafts right here. We'll do, uh, actually first, let's measure from here to here, 1.779. All right, and we're going to edit that in context, and we're going to create a sketch on the end of the shaft, and we're going to put a circle right in the center of it, and then, so that's good on the sketch, oops, let's stay in the sketch, we're going to extrude, remove, There we go. So while you're editing the sketch, you want to go to the extrude tool, remove, and then drop in that distance. Yep. Go to assembly. All right. So that should do it. Um, for some reason, this hole doesn't seem to go all the way through on this type of shaft when you download it. Um, honestly, not sure why. That is kind of strange. So I'll go ahead and edit that and make it so that we have a hole that goes all the way through the thing. So we'll do another sketch right here. And we'll have a hole. Oops. We'll put a circle right in the middle of it if we can. Yeah, it lets us do that. That's nice. And the diameter of that is just going to be 0.201. And then we can extrude, remove, and then we'll, instead of doing blind, we'll just do through all. It's not going all the way through. Merge with all menu. Okay, well, not sure why it's not going all the way, but we'll just make this four inches, say, so that way it goes all the way through the entire shaft. And go to assembly. And now we have our hole there, and it should have automatically copied over to every single one of them. Yep. So that's about it. Um, at this point, what I would do uh, if I was actually building this is I would put a, uh, a quarter 20 bolt right here with a little washer to hold the wheels on. I'd do that on all six shafts. And uh, the same thing on the inside right here for the four corner shafts. That about does it. Um, let me know if you have any questions uh, down in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.